Albion Online 2D has been around for a very long time, but it is essentially a database and tool website that has an assortment of different tools and information that you can use in your Albion Online gameplay. Whether you want to check out certain uh, PVPers, uh, if you want to do some sort of profit calculators for crafting or refining, they have a bunch of different tools for that. If you want to simply know where resources are located directly on the map, they have a resource for that. They have a lot of good stuff. I guess we can, we can kind of put it into like three or four categories. Uh, you have the meta tab, which is pretty much PVP stats. You can uh, click on that tab and see what the most popular uh, 1v1, 2v2, 5v5, 10v10, and Zerg PVP weapons that are that are out there currently. So it's kind of nice. I, I, I'm trying to look here and see if it makes sense what they're pulling here. I mean, dual sword build with these two things. I mean, this seems like a legit build. This seems legit. So I, I think this is accurate. You could see all that. You could also search for people, I think. So you can actually look up uh, your own profile. Mine's going to look pretty embarrassing, I think. But you could pull it up, see what their last kills was, see what their deaths was, all of the above here. It even tells you the set that I've been using. But yeah, they got the meta tab. You could search for your own people. They got a, they got a database tab of all the items. Items, mobs, building, laborers, islands that you can imagine. They have tools for crafting, farming profit, refining profit, the dev tracker, and they have a Discord kill bot as well. They have a bunch of guides. These are probably outdated though, I'll be honest. I asked him about it. I said, How, are these guides uh, kept up to date? And he said, no, these guides would not be up to date, but they still might give you some good information. You got a scoreboard. That's the whole thing where you could search for one, search for a person. And then a really cool feature is the map. Let's say you want to have a transport you can actually type the zone that you're coming from. So let's put in Kerleon. And let's say we want to go to a zone called Everwinter Gap. Now we click calculate and it's going to calculate the best route to take as far as like the fastest. So as you can see, from Kerleon, take northeast to Craig Moore. From Craig Moore, take northeast exit to Exalted Crypt. From Exalted Crypt, take northeast to Craig Gar. They have all of these routes that you could take and eventually it takes you there. They have a simplified version of it here, but it, it looks like you could use this for transports. So they got that along with this map and it, it, it could be really good. The other thing too is that they actually show the nodes as well. So for instance, since if I were to go to Scuttle Sink Marsh, a specific zone, and you could do this in any zone. Look at these little dots. This is literally pulling the data, saying exactly where you're gonna find different nodes that you want. So if some of you guys are like moving along like a certain area, and you're like, man, I really need fiber. Where where can I get the fiber? You hover over here, and you see that this white node is the fiber, and if you just kind of travel these areas, you should be able to see large amounts of the resource. So this is huge for maybe newer players who are wondering the best play, the best way to gather resources. You have a map that literally tells you where every node is spawning. We're going to go through some of these tools in detail. Let's get started on that. One of the biggest draws to AlbionOnline2D.com is the various tools that are available for people to use in order to do any assortment of things. Perhaps the most popular is the Craft Calculator, the Farming Profit Calculator, and the Refining Profit Calculator. Uh, let's start with the Craft Calculator and just see how this works. So as you can see here, uh, the craft calculator begins by asking you to add an item. So I would say here you would want to pull, uh, let's just say like a Realm Breaker, right? Let's say you want to craft a um, T5 Realm Breaker. What happens is you pull this in and then uh, it basically says this is it basically tells you you got one here now it automatically pulls the resources needed in order to craft said realm breaker so it says here's the required amount of cedar planks that's 12 required amount of ore is 20 and the artifact as well as one now what it tells you is if you're a gatherer and a refiner already let's say you are a plank gatherer you might already have these cedar planks so here we're just going to put 12 so we don't need any of that required this we're going to put 20 let's just say we need it and this we're just going to put i'm going to say we're going to have zero and zero here so it now says what the cost is let me just see how the cost is calculated here you might need to be clicking on these items in order for that to happen but let me just look 
your cost is going to be nothing here but you're going to want to check out your you're going to want to fill out this cost item and i'll show you why we actually want to look at the titanium steel bars in this example we have zero and what it does is it pulls the market prices of various markets it says right now a t5 steel bar refined is worth a certain amount in these different cities let's go do a quick test to see if this is accurate all right so it says here for one bar it's 753 silver let's compare to albion online 2d for care leon 756 okay so it's pretty accurate then 756 versus 753 so we know at least for care leon it is accurate now let's just extrapolate this out and say it's accurate for all the cities just for a moment obviously if you don't trust a website you should do your own research to see exactly if everything is accurate but here's probably one of the best ways to use this particular craft calculator by checking what the black market price is for the finished item so you go here and you just say let's let's try to see let's put a craft calculator for actually no we, we can do the same thing realm breaker here, this is the black market. It has all these different prices based on the different qualities of the gear. We can then actually go back if we wanted to. Click on the Realm Breaker and check out its market prices. So here it's saying, okay, so some cities are indeed missing. I'm not sure why it doesn't show all the cities, but some cities are indeed missing. You're right on that. 200, 260, 200 for a flat T5. We can then go back and say the regular markets are going to be selling for more. So this is not a good item to sell to the black market right now. But if you keep like, you know, looking around, let's say we do a T6. You know what? T6, actually, this is the best way to do it. You go through just, you go through like just these, these things and see which one is the highest. The way you would search on the black market is just choose t5 see what see what comes at the top so let's try to do a mist walker jacket right let's uh let's see that to do this go back here let's uh x out of this and add a new item a mist stalker jacket right t5 and let me just look and see again what we're doing here we are here it says what this is just that quality right quality is normal so let's just check a normal quality in the website where they all look kind of normal oh no okay i guess they don't have different quality here. All right. We pulled that. Let's see what the data shows. So Carleon it says 547,000. Fort Sterling, it says 500,000. Limhurst, it says 620,000. And we say here, it says 484,000. So it seems like this may not be a great item to sell here. Since it's kind of a high ticket item, people would probably want to buy it rather than, you know, selling it to the market here. But this is, this is a type of exercise you can do. And if you see that, for instance, there's a couple of cities that are not available, you can then manually go there if you want to be extra diligent. But this, at least at a glance, will give you a ballpark of what the pricing is in certain cities. And so it, it can give you the answer you need pretty quickly, even if it's just the first few cities. So I would say that is a good thing to do, but definitely checking the markets and every, everywhere else that this doesn't uh, show would be your next step here to, to determine if this is something good to do. Because if it is, you know, let's let's say, for instance, there's a cheaper price in a certain market, right? Like this right here, for instance, you might say to yourself, huh, so Fort Sterling is 500,000, Limhurst is 620,000. If I transport one of these things from Fort Sterling and sell it on Limhurst, I can make a profit there if it's actually selling at that price. So again, these are these are slight things that you can ballpark do. It doesn't have to be the black market. You could say, okay, well, black par black market pays the least, so that's out of the equation. Look at this though. Fort Sterling's at 500, Limhurst at 620. Let me buy it here, transport it here, make uh, make a little bit of a profit there, right? That's something that people can definitely do. From some resource prices are missing, so it's a bit annoying. T4 T5 items that aren't crafted with artifacts give more money for you in black market if you craft them. Ah, interesting. Okay, that's awesome. Again, it's not it's not 100% perfect as as we see, but hopefully you at least know how to set this up now. You you start by adding an item. Actually, wait, pull market prices. Time out, time out. Okay, hold on. Maybe I didn't do this right. Let me click on this. Now I want to click pull market prices. Okay, so it actually will pull the price here of cured leather of 16. So it costs 1175 per Thing of that instead of maybe going through what we did you can also pull market prices on the items that are needed to craft it right it's pulling the carleone price of 1175 so yeah it's, it's telling you right now that 
at most your cost is going to be 1175. It's I guess it's giving you like a worst case scenario because if you're trying to craft this, you obviously would want to not go to Carleone because it's the highest. You'd probably want to go to um Marlock, which seems to be the lowest. And that kind of makes sense to me if you think about it. Marlock is the city where I believe the hide bonus is. So if we if we were to open up the map, maybe some of you haven't noticed that this is a thing. Uh, you can go to every city in the game, click on it, and then there's a little carrot up here which gives you additional information. This is Marlock. As you can see here, it has a refining bonus of 40%. So it makes sense this is the lowest because it has everyone's bringing their hide here to refine it. So yeah, that, uh, that that would be how you would use this in that scenario for crafting as well. So not only did we not only did I show you different ways to, you know, perhaps just look at the prices of different items that are fully crafted, you could also calculate the the profit of individual items that you must purchase. It's definitely it's definitely more so used for an estimation, guys. Don't like don't use it necessarily as the gospel. Always double check certain things, especially if certain cities are missing from here. But it actually is pretty accurate from you know just a logic perspective that Marlock would be the lowest here. So I do see the accuracy. That's it for the craft calculator, I think. Let's go and look at the farming profit calculator here. And this thing actually does it for you all together and it gives you the formula. So in this, right, farming profit calculator, price is 1913. That is the cost it says and then it says 358 it doesn't say where these items are but what if i click on a carrot seed will it pull market prices yes okay beautiful so guys not only so the farming profit calculator is also pulling data from the albion online data project so you would use this similarly to how we would use the crafting calculator right uh you would Look at the look at the values here that it's trying to say. It tells you the uh, the things that you produce that can then you know be sold. It says profit without focus, profit with focus. So the profit without focus is the zero percent. Profit with focus is the two hundred percent. So you, you could see it actually does show you some pretty good stuff. Now this can't be right. A bean seed is six hundred ninety nine thousand. This this is probably pulling something wrong unless it's a joke that someone's trying to screw someone let, let me look at this actually yeah so it's not pulling appropriately let me just see if um okay the at the high end it's yeah i mean there it is right is that the number six nine 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 eight let me look here so for some reason it's not pulling the cheaper prices so that's that's that but similarly these are similar prices here uh also with the farm calculator too just just so you guys know too I don't believe it gives you the price that the vendor on your island sells for. So the final check would be after you see these different prices for the seeds, if you do care to like transport them because they're cheaper, you could do that. I don't think that is good to do for lower level stuff though, because the travel cost would probably not be worth it. However, you can do something like that. Just like, you know, compare what it costs on the island then compare what it costs on the markets and choose where you want to buy it from but but it's nice having this calculator because it literally if, if you can get the right price that you're paying then you pretty much have your profit being calculated automatically you just got to make sure that this part is accurate and then everything else should should flow through now perhaps something more uh more beneficial to use your focus on than let's say farming it's not a bad idea to do it here but a lot of people always use their focus refining on the next calculator that we're going to go through it's this one, right? The refining profit calculator. So let's go to hide. Pull current prices, pull average prices, and you could pull them from different areas here. Let's say we want to refine uh, T8 leather, right? I think, do we click on this? We click on this and we see the prices. Uh, however, that's not what I was looking for. Um, so a similar thing, you check prices. What if we change the craft amount to 100? Pull current prices. Full average prices, and this is this is showing for Carleon. Focus cost, profit and loss. If we go down here, we have a profit and loss thing. So yeah, so you'd you'd have to you'd have to look at this as well and and compare it to uh compare it to another area. But let me let me just see here. Let me just go to Fort Sterling. Full prices, and it tells you the prices here of of different things. This is just flat T8. It's a lot. 
these these resources are worth a lot now this for reinforced leather for some reason they're not showing it it's not pulling but you do have the prices here now okay and now if you're using focus you'd have to input the return rate as well as well as the tax rate in order to get an actual product and price and then and then that would that would end up refining stuff for you here so so let me just see let's just say i use focus say the return rate is say it's 40 right let's see pull current prices uh i think pull average prices is a good one uh return rate 40 let's see it shows you different ways to make a profit based on based on the focus amount too. focus cost okay I'm a little confused about this this part, but then again, he does say that there's a formula that he uses. So let's let's see what the formula is. Fee equals item value times 0.1125. And then profit equals product price minus resource costs plus resource cost divided by 100 times return rate minus fee times craft amount so you actually have to do your own calculation here to get this this isn't done automatically but this formula is giving you how to calculate it and it's giving you all the pricing you need to calculate it so that makes sense to me now it's it's not supposed to really self-calculate much it looks like it's trying to do something here but i would actually look here and utilize this in order to really get a better better idea of what the profit is so that's uh that's how you would end up uh you know looking at the return rate here and again the the biggest reason to use this site from what i am seeing is not only these calculators but like the fact you can click on individual items and it gives you you know a ballpark estimate of what you know where these are selling you know these are probably too high to, to look but if we were going to look at let's say you know 5.2 uh data not available for this item hmm then that's really weird so some some data is not available i mean but it is saying average price let me pull current prices maybe that'll be the difference maybe average price is what's messing it up yeah that's that's what it was so if you want to see the actual individual prices it's probably better to do current price rather than average because if you then click individually i believe the average price will not uh show you what it was so let's try that again pull average prices all right pull current prices well, average prices all right so so in some cases it just doesn't have the uh it doesn't have the information but double check on everything switch between current and uh average and you'll eventually find the pricing you're looking for you'll be able to find the pricing there you'll be able to you know increase your amounts here as well so very good uh this is the uh this is the refining profit calculator you could do it for every single uh type of uh, resource it has it for everything and so yeah if you wanted to get this we have return rates and profit it does calculate a little bit of a profit here and actually what, what we need to look at is that this is based on just crafting one right this is based on crafting one what the profit would be so if you look here actually maybe i'm maybe I'm, now i'm starting to read this a little bit better you look here this one here says 8.49 profit based on the based on this let me let me just multiply this by let's say 10 it should be 8000 at that point right let's just see yeah 8490 now i understand okay so yeah assuming that uh this is correct assuming that this this focus is correct that is how you would that's how you would do it you have to multiply by how much you can actually create through this and so this is yeah th this is taking the data and then and actually creating the profit so this does calculate it i would still recommend going through this manually just as a double check I, i'm sure a lot of you guys who are crafters refiners have your own methods for uh determining profit and stuff but again this could be kind of a high level view of what could be profitable for you it looks like t6 has has a little profit there but yeah by far it looks like 6.1 has the profit so yeah here's the food buffs table right it it, it gives you an example of what these things do now some of these are not are not pulling but some of them are i'm just trying to look at if i click on the bean salad and yeah and again you can do the same thing again if there's market data there for instance they got it on bridge watch you can you can check that out so if you're trying to determine hmm you know i want to be a uh, food salesman you can kind of look at the food buff table and it gives you every single type of food there is and then you can use this research 
to check pricing and uh, craft. So like if you click on the item, it gives you some market pricing here and you can then determine, okay, where should I sell it for the most value? These, these type of tables are actually quite good. Same thing with fishing, right? If you want to figure out what fish are really good for selling, you have every single fish possible that you can catch. Click on them again and you got uh, the pricing. Now this this right here, the 5003, this is what I was talking with the um, with the sign owner. He believes that this could be the Brusselin pricing, but this is a piece of feedback that I'm giving him uh, that certain certain things are not pulling. And, and, and in that scenario, it could be just the Albion data project not having that data, but he's, he's pulling directly from there. And so if this can be adjusted to reflect what 5003 is, that would be very helpful. Uh, the next table they have here is the potions again potions you, you can see what they all do and then you can choose which one you want to craft um, and you can use this in conjunction with other tabs right so like let's just say you want to be a minor energy potion crafter I know that's not going to be a lot of profit probably uh, it's low level but let's let's just let's just do that as an example if you want to see how to craft it uh, let's just see if it works on potions. Um, energy, on energy potions. So here it shows you that it takes this mushroom. We want to click full market prices. It'll show us that uh, that this is what would happen if you were to craft one potion, right? One potion would cost you two nine four four, and so then you would want to say, okay, if it's going to cost me two nine four four, let me see the pricing here really quick. Let me click on this. And as you can see here, it's not looking good, right? Crafting that does not look very good uh, if you are going to go out and purchase it yourself. If you go out and purchase it yourself, crafting this potion will not make you profit, it looks like. Simply because the cost is much higher than the sale price for the finished product. So in this case, you'd say, yeah, no profit here unless I have my own island and I'm creating my own stuff. In that case, uh, you'd still probably want to determine if you want to craft this or not simply because you'd want to look at the price of the mushrooms right like should you sell the mushrooms all at once or should you sell the finished product so you would basically say okay so we just saw the pricing here of the energy potion what's the price of the mushrooms <clears throat> and as you can see here the the price of one mushroom is right around the price and perhaps in some areas higher than the price Actually, it's higher almost all across the board. 292, 219. The only place it's not higher in is Bridgewatch. So in this case, you'd probably not necessarily want to craft that potion unless you're working towards leveling up your potion crafting to get to higher profitable, profitable items. That's why you would do that. But again, we just gave you another example of how to use uh, the craft calculator in conjunction with the potion buff table or any table. You could do that with anything. All right, now we also have the mount speed table. There's some more things that tell you, generally speaking, the move speed plus gallop speed. Uh, you'd want to probably double check here. Uh, double check the actual uh, mounts as well when you go to look at them. But if you don't know the mounts, this could also help you to you know, decide what to craft on your island as well. Animal breeding. Actually, this, this one would be the animal breeding. This actually is helpful. Um, and here's, here's a big reason why, right? It gives you good information on like you know what the pup chances are but perhaps you know more important is it tells you how long it takes to grow um it tells you what type of food it enjoys and so you know if, if you're wondering damn what am i gonna what am i gonna feed you know whatever i'm feeding you actually have the answers here you know certain things want plants certain things want meat and then it gives you some good chances like you know some good information on what the what your chances are to actually receive any of these uh, benefits crop farming and harvest table so this is uh just like the animal breeding table this is telling you detailed information about what each uh, particular plant can yield so whether it's beans or herbs i'm sure they're gonna have herbs in here too right uh yeah they do they got the yarrow so with all of these you get a chance for uh now what's interesting to me and I guess this is the case. I'd like to confirm, I suppose. Uh, and I could probably confirm that now. This says pick up fame 150, but it's 150 for all of them, regardless of what tier. I want to see if that's correct, because I would imagine that if it's a higher tier, you'd get more fame than just 150. But I can confirm that with an island I have right now. So let's go check. Go check to see if that's indeed an accurate uh, statement. 
All right, so this is what? This is the T6. If I were to take it, yep, yeah, that's right, 150. These, this is accurate. So actually, if you wanted to level up your, your farming guys in the fastest way possible, probably the cheapest way to do it would be just carrot seeding all the way up until whatever tier you want to be at. Uh, at least I, I, I think, I think that'd be like the, yeah, probably the cheapest way, especially for not using focus. Just kind of level up through carrot seeds all the way through. And so I would not have known to think that way without looking at this table. Like I didn't know it was all the same. So if I want to get to T8. I'm just going to keep doing carrot seeds forever. It's a very useful table. Focus fire protection table. Uh, PVP focus protection. Attack by multiplayer's temporarily uh, damage protection bonus. All right. So if it's two, two opponents, you are getting 17% damage reduction. Uh, if you're ranged, you only get 10. If you're mounted, you get 17. Okay, this is this. I would I have no way to tell if this is accurate, but there is such thing as focus fire, guys. And so the more people who attack one person, the the beefier that person becomes. I mean, they're probably still dead 9v1, no matter what, right? But at least it's going to be slightly harder, and that's what this table is trying to show. As the number of people increase, the the max cap of this is 80%. Um, but again, I have no way to cross-reference this data simply because I don't know enough about focus fire protection and, and where I could find that. PV mob focus prote protection. This is trying to tell you that above a certain level, the opponent, the uh, PV mobs will begin gaining health. Uh, the more people are actually attacking them. Now, from what I understand and what I've been telling people. The ideal PvE group size is between five to seven people. When you start getting eight or more, that's when this uh, PvE mob protection kicks in. However, the way that it shows it as opponents one, um, I am not sure what it's trying to say. Albion sports outnumbered inhabitants and increase their health by... So yeah, I, I think that's what this is saying. But yeah, if, if this table is accurate, it, it can help you judge if you should like try to 1vx, right? Okay, with three people attacking me, I'm going to be 30% tankier or better. Like, can I can I make this work? That's the question you ask yourself. Uh, there's a game hints. I mean, that one's quite obvious. QWERDF, yeah. Yeah, you know, if you could actually, you know what? This could be nice. Let's see what else they have. Your armor loses durability when struck, and your weapons similarly when they strike something. You can repair your armor and weapons in cities. Uh, you can change the ability to set up on your items at any time. This will put all equipped items on cooldown. So um, not any time. you got to be out of combat for that. But that is a good point. There's a chance that I'm you're wearing or carrying might be destroyed completely when you die in full loop PvP. Absolutely. When you move into another area, you are invincible for a short duration, but you cannot you cannot can't attack while the effect is active. Uh, if you do, the effect is gone. That's kind of what happens. That's That's the protection bubble. Press shift enter to write in the all channel by default. Oh, wow. I did not know this. Shift enter is all channel. Uh, alt enter is guild. But yeah, you, you can go ahead here and see if there is something that you didn't know, right? That's that's the point of this. If you didn't know something, uh, you could quickly learn hints by reading through this. And it's not very long. It's not very long. So you could easily read that and see which ones have been updated over time. Uh, achievements. This is for the Steam stuff. Uh, all the different achievements you can get. So if you're an achievement hunter, you can use this site here to perhaps intentionally work towards an achievement. I know a lot of people like to do that. So this is kind of nice, actually, having the achievements here and, and what it what it takes to get them. Party Finder, let me just see what this is. This is actually telling you how to use the Party Finder. So yeah, if you guys don't know how to use the Party Finder, this is what you would use. This is what you could look at. I don't believe it's changed since this was created, by the way. It looks pretty much the same. Yep. Yeah. Exact same. If you didn't know about the party founder, guys, you can always use this site to show you exactly how to set it up. Uh, again, the scoreboard is more so for uh, you know looking at uh, looking at the PvP, uh, seeing seeing the top players who are doing it, or reviewing your own. Uh, as we discussed earlier, some of these kills and stuff might be delayed by a certain amount, but a lot of them seem like they're not. So yeah, you could use this information to just check people out, similar to how you would use Murder Ledger as well. That gives you more data as well. Top 20 PvE fame players. That some PvE stuff. PvE fame, gathering fame. Um, this is for the last month. So 
Okay, that works out there. So you can use this for all of, uh, oh wait, Crystal League 5v5. Now here is, so, so this is actually a very interesting to me right now because one of the biggest uh, things that Albion Online is known for from a popularity standpoint is the Crystal Arena. And there is nothing that can show you meta for Crystal Arena because there is no actual death in Crystal Arena. This is not full loop PvP. And so I was thinking to myself, the only way you would be able to see any kind of potential meta is by looking at uh, the Crystal Leagues that are lethal. And it looks like that's what he has here. I did not realize it was here. But let's let's try to let's try to see if we can come up with meta here because this is really interesting. I want to look up Comeback Dad. I want to see his one death. If it's from any of these players, then we then we know pretty much that that's the set that this guy was using in a Crystal League match. Doesn't mean that it's meta. It just gives you an indication of what is being used, which if 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 a developer were to take the next step here to like reconcile the process of me having to go and check like somehow link to the link to the kill board for this death if that could happen someone comes up with that way to do that suddenly all you crystal arena players and all of the crystal league players who are just starting can learn from all the other people who are pretty much using the meta gear to win their matches like it'd be nice to see for instance let's say dede m was killed by comeback dad or comeback dad was killed by dede then we would probably see uh something there so uh, let's just go to albionline.com for a second and uh there's a kill board here i just want to look some I think you can look up individual people right yeah so comeback dad no data available for some reason why? Maybe I spelt his name wrong. Come back then. No, his name was right. Let me let me try Dada M. Okay, player Dada M. So yeah, we'd have to we'd have to. It would be very difficult for us to find this information by doing it this way. Uh, unless what about Crystal League five e five? Oh wait, this is it right here. This is what they pulled, right? I think that's the exact same thing. A zero one forty nine zero Medion's team. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Hold on, this is getting interesting. So maybe you can actually get this information. Oh, they don't allow us to click on it either. They're just taking this data. So not even not even uh, Albion is allowing you to see the actual information here. Okay, so we know that's accurate, uh, you know, for the current leagues. But yeah, you'd have to somehow, you know, go through this individual and um, go through all the people and try to find out what they were wearing for this particular match. And I, I'm sure there's a way technology-wise to do it, but we know now that uh, this is something that we can recommend to this uh, this gentleman to take the next step because that would be a big thing. Okay, so that's that. Let me look and see if there's anything else here outside of we just saw there. Yeah, battles. I guess they also have their own uh, ZVZ battle uh, board as well. So you guys can also look here and see... Uh, exactly what's going on it looks like it's fairly accurate too because it says the today's date so yeah you can definitely look at this again though i'm not sure if this is only for uh west or or if it includes east but this is probably more so west data than anything else <clears throat> so in this scenario you'd want to use albionbattles.com because they have both east and west but if this gentleman adds east there i think it would be very nice yeah, it's pretty much at east data is the biggest uh <clears throat> the biggest uh feedback i see uh, i'm gonna just check one thing really quick sorry yeah and i i just got confirmation as well from the uh, site owner that uh indeed it's only west data again perhaps one of the more uh interesting uh tools that this site has is the fact that it categorizes just about every resource that the game has uh, for you to see exactly what map has what resource right at where the resources spawn it also allows you to come up with uh, the fastest way to get places so let's let's just say we go Fort Sterling and you know what? I'm gonna say ever winter gap again it's a, it's top of mind for whatever reason uh, so we're gonna say um, we're gonna use this map to help us you know find a find a route that we would want to transport to so we're starting here we have a hideout let's pretend a never winter gap and we're like okay how do i get there calculate 
So it says, uh, it tells you where to go. It tells you to go to Conqueror's Hall. It tells you to take the Fort Sterling portal. Uh, it says go to Northwest Exit to White Bank Stream. Then take Northwest Exit to White Bank Ridge. Then take Northwest Exit to Everwinter Crossing. Take Southwest to Everwinter Gorge. And then take Southwest to Everwinter Gap. Now, this is really helpful, actually. Because a lot of people don't know like how to get places. You could just type it in here and say, okay, so once once I'm in the portal area, we go northwest, 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 southwest, southwest. Bam, you're there. Northwest portal, northwest, northwest. Yeah, see? So it, it, they have a simplified way to do it. And then it shows you, it even shows you the uh, map, I think, of, of where to go, right? So that's Fort Sterling. And then it is showing us exactly how to do it so this is white bank stream that's white bank ridge that's everwinter crossing everwinter gorge everwinter gap so yeah if you guys don't know how to get places this is basically your albion online gps let's say let's say once you get an everwinter gap you were thinking okay well now that i'm here near my hideout i'm going to start gathering in here so you could probably just click on this i'm going to see what happens yeah Exactly. This is what I thought would happen. And suddenly, you have the map of Everwinter Gap, and all these little circles represent resource nodes. You got fiber. Uh, you got rock. You got ore. Uh, and it says fiber medium, fiber low. So there's 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 nodes here that uh, you can use to see exactly what's going on. Now, I don't I don't know why it's saying low medium high if this is telling us that if this is a dynamic map and it changes with like the activity in the map right like let's say let's say fiber high means it's like a full node if it's telling you that there's full nodes here that's pretty crazy or or high amounts i, I don't know what this what this means and so i'll have to double check on this but maybe it's telling us that you have a higher likelihood of getting more ticks in the rock high nodes versus the rock medium nodes and the rock low nodes. Same with the fiber, fiber or medium. So yeah, there's there's some interesting things that you could do with this, but you know, if, if you don't know where to find a lot of resources, you could literally just come here and say, okay, well, if I want to get rocks, we know a ton's there. We know a ton is over here, pretty much all the way around. So this is another resource for those gatherers around among us that uh, may want to see what's popping off in certain zones yeah you can even search for particular zones without having to do the directions thing the directions thing is only if you need to travel but you can pull up any zone you want by either hovering over it on this map and clicking on it you'll get that same that same map uh, view that also gives you the same uh, types of resources it's quite nice it goes to show that there's a crap ton of resources in each zone, right? But sometimes they seem very hard to come by. So it's funny to see how many there actually are when we may complain from time to time that there's not enough. So yeah, that's uh, that's how you would use the map.